What's up losers, KD3 here. Before anyone says anything, I know that I already have a tier list for the confidants, but I wanted to remake a video like this in a more clean and concise manner so that you can learn what you need to faster. Before I start, I would like to mention that I will not be discussing story related confidants since you will get those no matter what, leaving us with 20 of the confidants to choose from. There will also be some pretty big changes from my tier list, along with more in-depth explanations for the confidants placements. Now on to business. With my vision, I'll guide you all to victory. Sounds great! Persona 5 Royals confidants ranked from worst to best. Alright, we're starting off with the D tier and starting off at number 20 to nobody's surprise, it's Ichiko Oya of the Devil Arcana. As much as I love this character, her lackluster abilities did not get any better in Persona 5 Royal. She was the worst in vanilla and she's the worst now. If you're unfamiliar with her, her abilities revolve around keeping the security palace level low, which is already really easy. Especially if you have the chains hook from Kasumi's confidant. To make things worse, if you manage to complete the thieves den, you can get an item that makes these abilities completely useless since it makes you invisible to the enemies in a palace. Her persona is pretty decent, gaining skills such as concentrate, curse amp, and megidola on. In my opinion, this is the only bad confidant in the game. The rest of them are really good, some are just way better than others. Next up is C tier. There is no C tier. I told you guys, these confidants are really good. Moving into the B tier, we have Kasumi Yoshizawa of the Faith Arcana, number 19. Besides the usual combat perks you get, she has a chains hook that lets you ambush enemies from a distance along with the ability to stop you from getting ambushed, which is pretty nice to have. Her awakened personas are nothing to write home about, but Maria, the persona you get for maxing her confidant, definitely is. You see, Maria excels in healing, possessing a trait called Grace of Mother that reduces healing costs by 75%. With the right skills like Salvation and Firm Stance, this persona can make you and your party pretty much unkillable. Next up, we have Taro Nosuke Yoshida of the Sun Arcana. This is one you'll definitely want to get early since his lower ranked skills let you farm money from enemies, along with skills like asking for rare items, skipping negotiation dialogue, and recruiting higher level enemies. On top of that, his confidant is a guaranteed rank up every time you spend time with him. With all of the good I have to say about him, you'd think he's S tier, right? Wrong. As amazing as he is, the new mechanics added to Persona 5 Royal make most of his kit obsolete, making most of his kit only good for the early game. Farming rare items is still nice though. His persona, Ashura, also possesses the skill Unshaken Will, which will make you immune to all ailments, and has the best nuke skills in the game, along with a trait that reduces their cost by 75%. Despite this, one of Persona 5's best confidants has fallen far from the top in Royal. Ifumi Togo of the Star Arcana takes the number 17 spot. I know when I made my tier list video, a lot of people had an issue with her placing due to how useful they believe her party member swapping abilities are. Even with all of the time that has passed since then, I still do not value them that much. I just never feel the need to swap party members due to the versatility of Joker and the rest of the party members. Toryu is still nice to have in case you struggle to defeat the Reaper, but my favorite skill of hers is Narakin. I'll explain why later. Her ultimate persona Lucifer is one of the best skill sets in the entire game, starting with attacks that deal massive damage on top of being able to learn skills like Morningstar that do colossal almighty damage to all enemies, Spellmaster, Insta Heal, and Drain Fizz, along with the trait Forbidden Knowledge which reduces the cost of all magic by 75%. This one is a must have. Number 16 is tied to Kemi of the Death Arcana, another confidant that I was ridiculed for not putting higher. Her impressive stock of heals only gets better as you raise her confidant. Unfortunately, like Yoshida's skills, hers also have a shelf life, and the SP Adhesive 3 accessory that people love to hype up pales in comparison to other SP restoration options. Her ultimate persona, Alice, is amazing for general dungeon crawling due to her specialty being insta-kill skills. Die for me has a high chance of instant killing all enemies. The die already trait makes it so that there's a chance that instant kill skills cost nothing. She also comes with Mudo Boost by default, of course. She also learns Magidola on and Concentrate later just in case your enemies resist curse damage. Shinya Oda of the Tower Arcana takes the next spot. I have moved him down from A tier to B tier for this video. Despite that, he has a solid kit of skills, dealing extra damage to ambushed enemies, scaring personas with a gunshot to make negotiations easier, random chances of inflicting ailments with gunshots, and his most notable skill Downshot, which gives you a guaranteed knockdown on an enemy. With the 
added ability to ignore resistances later. And it's an amazing skill if you're fighting an enemy that you don't know how to get the best of. The reason I lowered his position on the tier list is because if you have a hang of the combat, you will not be using this skill very often, especially since Joker is the only one that can use it. Still a good skill to have if you struggle to knock certain enemies down. His ultimate persona, Mata, excels in fire spells and has amazing skills like Unshaken Will, Amarita Shower, Enduring Soul, and Spellmaster. Next we'll be moving on to the A tier. The A and S tier confidants are definitely the ones you'll want to focus on the most. Munehisa Iwai of the Hangman Arcana takes the number 14 spot on this list. Although this confidant can be difficult to start since you need rank 4 guts, it's very much worth it. The weapons and customizations that you can get for your weapons are very powerful and can even inflict ailments. You can even bring in weapons from the Velvet Room to customize. Unfortunately, his ultimate persona, Addis, is probably one of the worst if not the worst out of all the confidants, due to it not having any super useful skills. Number 13 is Sojiro Sakura of the Hierophant Arcana. What makes Sojiro so good is that he teaches you to make SP restoring coffee and curry that's really nice to have for the early game palaces and is even useful up to end game since master coffee and curry can restore a lot of SP. Hanging out with Sojiro also increases your kindness. The thing that stops him from being S tier is that you cannot finish his confidant until you finish the 4th palace due to story related events. If you reach a certain rank before this is done, you will be unavailable to hang out with until you've done the 4th palace. His ultimate persona, Koryu, excels in psychic skills and healing learning amazing skills like Concentrate, Psy Amp, and Spell Master. His trait Universal Law increases technical damage by 50%, which is amazing for Koryu since Psychic gets technical damage from 7 of the ailments, 8 if you have read Knowing the Heart. Check out my technical rank guide if you want to know how to find that book. On to Kamiki of the Lover's Arcana is number 12. I'm not going to lie to you guys, her confidant skills aren't anything special, and sexy technique barely works, but on herself is well worth putting your time into. Her set of skills is amazing and it only gets better as she gets her other awakenings. She can put enemies to sleep which leads to easy technical damage. She can do a ton of damage with her fire skills with the right setup and even give the whole party concentrate. The trait of her strongest persona, Celestine, gives the party a chance to have their magic cause half. Built correctly, On can be a massive threat in fights. Her ultimate persona, Ishtar, excels in the healing department with some similar skills to Maria, but Maria is a better persona overall. You can get Ishtar much earlier though. The number 11 spot belongs to Makoto Nijima of the Priestess Arcana. Makoto lets you scan the enemy to check its skills and drops as well as what skills it can drain, repel, or nullify on top of the usual party member battle abilities. When her persona evolves, it increases the chances of inflicting burn, shock, and freeze by 50% with its trait, making it amazing for party members that use skills that inflict those ailments. She also gets the skill checkmate which casts debilitate on everyone. Her ultimate persona Psy Beal isn't anything special, but its trait increases baton pass damage. If you're wondering why it took this long for another party member to show up, keep in mind ranking up their confidant also makes them more efficient in combat. Kasumi's kit is only helpful in one battle since she can get pretty much guaranteed critical hits. Real ones know what battle I'm talking about, but her skill set doesn't really benefit the group as a whole like the others. Starting off the top 10, we have you. Yusuke. Jurameshi. No, Yusuke Kitagawa of the Emperor Arcana. His ability to create and duplicate skill cards on the spot is way too good to pass up. It comes in handy when you're trying to make optimal builds for your personas. The best part is that it doesn't actually take up any time. Once his persona evolves, it gets a trait that increases the chances of everyone avoiding physical attacks as well as a skill that gives Heat Riser to the entire party. His ultimate persona, Odin, excels in the electric attack department and learns amazing skills like Concentrate and Elec Amp. Now we're moving into the upper echelon of confidants, the S tier. Starting out the S tier, we have Yuki Mishima of the Moon Arcana. It's extremely easy to see why this character is in S tier. First off, he ranks up every time you hang out with him, making him extremely easy to max. On top of that, he allows backup party members to gain experience, as well as increases the amount of experience you get overall, making him one of the must-max confidants if you want to level up quickly. His ultimate persona, Sandolphin, isn't the best. It may even be worse than Addis, EY's persona. Angelic Grace and Repel Curse are still pretty nice to have. 
Number 8 goes to Futaba Sakura of the Hermit Arcana. Due to her being the navigator, she has some pretty unique abilities. First off, she can scan an entire floor of mementos. This is a godsend, especially when you're collecting the stamps, because you can skip floors that don't have them, or save time trying to get to your desired destination. Treasure Reboot is nice in palaces for trying to get treasure demons since it resets all of the breakables. She is phenomenal in battle as well, being able to give the team buffs and charges, she can even trigger instant holdups ending fights quickly, or if you're in a pinch in battle, she can block fatal attacks. Having her persona evolve increases her support abilities, as well as gives your all-out attacks a chance to instantly kill enemies. Her ultimate persona, Angyo Ki, has some amazing skills that you'll want to take for inheritance, such as Firm Stance and Arms Master. The Demon Bite trait is also amazing to use on Maria since she has the best passive healing in the game. Number 7 is Dr. Maruki of the Counselor Arcana. The reason I have him so high is because of the consistency when it comes to his abilities triggering, especially Detox X, which instantly heals Joker if he is inflicted with an ailment. He also has the chance of restoring his SP when low and starting the battle with Charge and Concentration. Trait. But most importantly, you need to max him to unlock the third semester. His ultimate persona, Bohu Mana, isn't that great to be honest. Its trait that extends buffs durations for two turns is pretty good though. At number 6 we have Haru Okumura of the Empress Arcana. I think Haru is a character that we've all underestimated, but when I really take a look at her whole kit, she's got a good amount of pretty much everything. Her confidant skills let you plant vegetables to grab later for things like SP restoration and charges without passing time. Her persona is really good at covering getting crits and technical damage since it specializes in Psy and Gun skills. Her second awakening gives her an amazing skill called Life Wall that blocks physical and magic attacks for the whole party. The new trait also reduces the odds of getting ailments by 50%. Her ultimate persona, Mother Harlot, has some really good skills such as Ice Amp, Null Bless, and Debilitate. I know people will mention that you can get her too late in the game, but that's where I find her kit the most useful. Alright guys, this is it. The top 5. And for the top 5, I think a new tier is appropriate. So these last 5 confidants will go into the god tier, as I believe these confidants are easily the most important in the game. Starting off god tier, we have Goro Akechi? Anyone that watched my original tier list may point out that I had Akechi at S tier. So what in the world made me move Akechi from A tier to god tier? It's actually pretty simple. It's not his list of abilities, it's not his skill set, and it's not even his second awakening. The reason Goro Akechi is god tier is because you need to get him to rank 4 to unlock the Jazz Club. The Jazz Club lets you increase your party member's stats and give them amazing new skills if they're brought on the right days. These stat increases also carry over to New Game Plus, and if these games taught me anything, it's that even a tiny increase of stats can go the long way. If you're crazy enough, you can max the whole party stats, but let's get into what Akechi himself can do. On top of the battle skills, he already has Sleuthing Instinct, which can reveal an enemy's affinities, and this can be upgraded to reveal all of them later. Awakening his persona gives him a trait that has a chance of reducing the cost of support and almighty skills in half, and a skill that does a colossal almighty damage to a foe, extra if it's knocked down. While Akechi himself is pretty good, I would not use him in important fights since the team synergy just doesn't seem to be there, but the Jazz Club is a must if you're serious about demolishing bosses. Number 4 belongs to Sadayo Kawakami of the Temperance Arcana. Top 2 in Persona 5, but I had to move her down a couple spots due to some pretty drastic changes to some of the other confidants, so yes, she is out of the Holy Trinity. But make no mistake, she is still a mandatory confidant because of how much more time you gain by ranking her up. Goofing off in class lets you increase your social stats without taking up time. You can have her make you coffee and curry. She can do your laundry and make tools. But the absolute most important thing is that if you get her to rank 10, you can get a special massage from her that lets you leave at night even if you've been to the metaverse. This is a godsend since that means you can get so much more done, which means less to do in New Game Plus. Her ultimate persona, Arda, has a pretty neat set of skills as well as a trait that doubles SP regeneration. Not bad. Starting off the Holy Trinity, we have Caroline and Justine, representing the Strength Confidant. Persona 5 Royal gave these girls one massive change that let them take Kawakami's spot in the Holy Trinity. You remember Special Treatment, that ability that you got at rank 10 in vanilla? Yeah, that's rank 5 now. Which means if you can get them to rank 5 early, you can do some serious damage early in the game. 
The earliest I managed to get it was in Okumura's palace, but if you're not sure what it does, it lets you pay to create shadows that are higher level than you, or personas. I have no clue what they were thinking making that rank 5. Rank 10 gives you a discount on it, and that's not all. Reaching rank 8 allows you to create Yoshitsune, one of the most powerful non-DLC personas in the game. Their ultimate persona, Zhao Gongen, has one of the best traits in the game, Undying Fury, which increases the power of all physical attacks by 30%. These last two might as well be number one so treat them both as such because when they work together they utterly wreck this game. The number two spot goes to Ryuji Sakamoto and all it took was one small change for him to go from the bottom of the barrel to king status. Remember his ability instant kill that let you instantly kill enemies by dashing into them? Yeah, that's busted now. In Royal, you get the money, EXP, and the persona from it as if you actually enter the battle. It even works with Hifumi's Narakin skill to give you the double money since instant killing counts is an all-out attack. This skill alone makes money and EXP farming a joke, so grinding will never be a concern again. The fact that you can get this so early in the game is disgusting. I almost don't want to mention Ryuji's persona at all because instant kill is just that good. His awakened persona's trait has a chance of strengthening the party's physical attacks by 80%, and his trait gives the whole party charge. His ultimate persona, Chiyu, excels in size skills. And the absolute best confidant in Persona 5 Royal is... As if anyone is surprised, Chihaya Mifune. All the suffering she puts you through is worth it 100%. Her list of abilities is amazing. The rank 1 ability, Lucky Reading, increases the points you receive for a selected social stat for the remainder of the day, letting you rank them so much faster. Money Reading increases money gained from fights, so combined with Instant Kill and Narakin, that's a lot of money to be made. The Affinity Reading skill lets you increase points in a confidant without spending time with them, so if you are one off from ranking up, you can hang out with them that same day. Thanks Chihaya. We're gonna skip special fate reading because we don't care about that, but her ability that easily makes her number one? Celestial reading. Not only does this automatically trigger a fusion alarm, but it increases the odds of this happening for the rest of the day. Combined with instant kill, this can be used to max out all of a persona's stats by making a persona during an alarm, then using it to strengthen the persona you want to make strong with the gallows. The execution will fail, but that's the point. You will get 10 points to distribute across the stats, and you can do this over and over and over again. You can also abuse this to farm for items or skill cards that you may want, but you get the gist of it now. We're not even going to go over her ultimate persona because some of the other characters needed that as a crutch, but the S tiers, absolutely not.